Welcome to What's New in 2013. We've got the latest on movies, fitness, relationships, and happenings on Temple's main campus. But first... Hey guys, I'm Jess Smith here, and I've got the Tech Talk for 2013 here on TUTV. Now, who's going to come up on top this year? Apple? Microsoft? Sony? I bet you'll say Apple, but I also think you did not know that Sony is about to release an Android phone that lets you answer phone calls in the shower. And they're also making a waterproof Walkman that lets swimmers listen to music underwater. Do people even still use Walkmans anymore? Whatever. Anyways, cheers to all you impulsive and typical consumers who obsessed over buying the ridiculously priced iPhone 5. Told you all not to do it because the iPhone 5S is expected to be released in summer 2013. It's said to have a Super HD Retina display and equipped with a bigger battery to cope with the extra drain on my juice. Thank you, Apple. It's about damn time. Google is bringing Wi-Fi to the streets of New York City, the Fortune 500 company, no surprise there. That's right, you don't have to steal your neighbor's internet Wi-Fi anymore. It has been said that there's no word on when this will come out, but I'm sure it'll be soon enough. And when it does, the Wi-Fi will cover a 15-block radius in the Chelsea neighborhood. Just that 15-block radius alone will cost $115,000 to start. And it'll only cost $45,000 annually to keep up with it. Do you know how many college tuitions you can pay with that? You can start with mine. Now, I'm going to step back here. I'm the geek here, so I can obsess over technology all day. But I do want to remind you Americans to get off the crazy internet, man. He's killing your brain. Go out and get some exercise, why don't you? I'm actually going to send you viewers over to Victoria, my favorite workout Barbie. She's got some good stuff in store. Victoria? Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. I was just working out. My name is Victoria Miniscalco, and as you can see, fitness is my New Year's resolution for the year of 2013. I'm sure many of you out there have the same resolution. It's a tough one to tackle, so let's do it together. Here are some tips for college students on keeping fit and staying healthy. Remember, to eat breakfast, it's, after all, the most important meal of the day. Breakfast is the fuel that your body needs to get yourself through the day, and since college students are always on the go, eating breakfast can have a major impact on a college student's performance. Avoid eating when stressed. Yes, Mom. My notes. This paper. Where's my planner? Try to exercise doing at least 30 minutes of cardio five times a week to keep in shape. Weight training helps to reduce stress, increase metabolism, and release endorphins. Remember not to get too caught up with what the scale says. Your goal should be to feel healthier, not to reach a certain weight. Don't forget about the Temple facilities and group fitness classes that are offered to Temple students. You know, I heard that there's this really great Zumba instructor named Victoria. You should probably go take her class sometime. I heard she's really good. <laughs> Making time to exercise is half of the battle. Don't forget that exercise is not the only factor in becoming a healthier you in the coming year. Eating healthy also plays a major role in becoming fit, so take advantage of the nutritionist available on Temple's campus. With a hectic schedule, it's hard to maintain good eating habits. Remember to try to pre-plan meals and prepare healthy snacks to take along with you throughout the day. This way you can manage portion size, keep track of what you're eating, and avoid spending extra money when eating out, which can become an unhealthy habit. Hey, I'm starving. Wanna go get a burger? Um, ah, I brought my own today. Going back to the elementary days. All right. Yeah, maybe tomorrow. So, there you have it. Tips to help you stay healthy and fit in the new year. Now, if you'll excuse me, it's time for me to get back to my workout. Now to Ben, who has the latest on movies. Thanks, Tori. Uh, 2012 was a great year for movies, and I'm really excited to see the uh, upcoming movies in 2013. These are my top five most anticipated movies of 2013. 
For number five, we have The Great Gatsby. It's been like almost 40 years since the Robert Redford version, like the really amazing version came up. And, um, but like now I think that's like gonna be changed up to entirely and like there's gonna be like, it's like look, looks crazy. There's like tons of new stylistic choices with it. Leonardo DiCaprio and Tobey Maguire seem like a really good choice for uh, Gatsby and Nick. And Carey Mulligan is gonna be in it, who is a really great actress. Um, I'm slightly confused why it's going to be in 3D. I don't really know what that's going to be about, but it should be, it should be a good movie any, at any rate. And uh, that's coming out on May 10th. Number four on my list is going to be Monsters University. I, that is definitely one of my favorite uh, Pixar movies originally. Monsters, Inc. was amazing. Billy Crystal and John Goodman are just really a really good duo. And um, yeah, it should be pretty funny and should have like lots of good jokes in it. And uh, yeah, so that's coming out uh, June 21st. Number three on my uh, list is After Earth. And uh, it's a sci-fi movie, so it should be uh, pretty entertaining for me. I'm a big sci-fi fan. Uh, it's, it stars my favorite father-son duo, Will Smith and Jaden Smith. And it's set in this like futuristic scene where um, like all the humans moved away from Earth, and now, like, uh, Will Smith and Jane Smith come back, and it's now this, like, crazy world where humans are, like, the bottom of the food chain, so it should be, like, a pretty cool thriller, and that's releasing June 7th. Number two on my list is Anchorman, The Legend Continues. Uh, I really love the first Anchorman, so this should be a really funny uh, sequel. Uh, it seems to have, like, all the, all the cast back in it. Um, Steve Carell, uh, Paul Rudd, uh, that other guy who wears the cowboy hat, he's going to be in it. <laughs> um, there hasn't been really much uh, released about it, but uh, there was like a funny little teaser trailer that came out, that, and it looks really silly and pretty funny. And that's coming out December 20th. And the number one uh, movie on my list is Man of Steel. And like this, this is going to be a tough thing to do because I feel like it's really hard to make a good Superman movie because all the ones in the past have been... Okay, but you know they they always end up being like just a little bit corny. But Zack Snyder is directing it. He directed Watchmen and uh, 300, and so those are like really awesome movies. And Christopher Nolan is producing it, and he we all know The Dark Knight was amazing. So like, I think this has a pretty good potential to be really awesome, and that's coming out June 14th. So those were my top five anticipated movies of 2013. And now over to Haley with some updates on construction around Temple's campus. Thanks, Ben. So what's new for Temple University? Well, bulldozers and hard hats may have been the norm last year on main campus, but 2013 will bring the completion and further progress of several construction projects. The new five-story parking garage on the corner of 11th and Montgomery is scheduled for completion in April. The garage will add over 1,000 parking spaces to a campus in dire need of more parking solutions. 2012 brought a new facade to the Pearson McGonagall Building Complex, but renovations to the facility are still underway. Renovations to the existing building are now complete. The new addition meant to provide retail spaces will need a few more months of work. Pearson McGonagall will soon house all athletic activities previously located in the student pavilion. Meanwhile, Morgan Hall grows closer to completion every day. The new 26-story residence hall with dining and retail spaces is planned to house 1,600 students. Housing has become an issue for Temple where the student population continues to expand. Morgan Hall will include a large courtyard in an effort to increase green spaces on Temple's main campus. The project comes with a price tag of over $200 million. At the corner of 12th and Paulette Walk, Work on the foundation for the new Science Education and Research Center has begun. Though this project is still in its early stages, it will eventually grow six stories and house high-tech classrooms and lecture halls. Those are just some of the many changes we can expect to see at Temple in the new year. Now, over to Brian. Thanks, Haley. I'm Brian DeLucio, and welcome to the TV segment of What's New in 2013. Starting on January 6th, we have American Dad, Bob's Burgers, and Family Guy, and The Simpsons, all airing on the same day. And The Simpsons was just renewed through their 25th season. Now, starting on January 8th, we have something I'm personally excited for, Africa, which is made by the same creators of Frozen Planet, Planet Earth, and Life. We also have Justified. 
and the season four premiere of the TV show New Girl on Fox, along with Vegas on CBS starring Dennis Quaid. Now on to Wednesday, January 9th, we only have one notable premiere, and that is Modern Family on ABC starring Ty Burrell, and we also have 30 Rock on January 10th. Now 30 Rock have been running for six seasons, and they're now on their seventh and final season. And same with The Office, that's also premiering on the seventh. Now on Sunday, January 13th, we have all of our primetime cable shows airing, which I'm personally excited for. We have Californication, we have New Girl, we have uh, House of Lies starring Don Cheadle, and we also have Shameless starring Emmy Rosam and William H. Macy. Then on January 14th, we have How I Met Your Mother, and that's also the series finale where we finally get to find out how they met their mother. And January 16th, my other favorite show, Workaholics, followed by the season premiere of The Kroll Show, both airing on Comedy Central. Not to, not, uh, also, then on January 17th, we have Archer, followed by Parks and Rec on NBC, and then January 25th, the Spartacus season finale. Now, February finally rolls around, and we have a lot less premieres than January, but still some notable ones to be mentioned, such as The Community on NBC and the season four of Walking Dead on AMC. And then in March, we only have one real big premiere to talk about, and that is Game of Thrones. But now on to my top picks. Number one, Breaking Bad. Now Breaking Bad starring Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul, and he is a meth cook who was once a high school chemistry teacher. So very interesting show, everyone should check it out. They're now entering their seventh and final season. On The Shameless, my second choice. That's starring Amy Rosa and William H. Macy. And they are a dysfunctional family that belongs to Frank Gallagher, who is played by William H. Macy and his six children. Now, Workaholics, which is everybody's favorite comedy, get to follow our favorite trio, Blake, Durs, and Adam, as they go on to their fourth season. My number four pick is Walking Dead. Now, my little thing with AMC is they're doing this half-season nonsense, which I don't know what that's all about. So this is season three and a half now, I guess. I'm not sure. And my last, my last pick is House of Lies, which is starring Don Cheadle and Kristen Bell. Now, this is a very underrated show, in my opinion. It didn't get much, uh, much uh, news at first, but... It's, it's about a uh, former consultant at Booz Allen Hamilton, Marty Kahn, who was played by uh, Don Cheadle. And it's by a management consulting group who stop at nothing to get business deals done, even if it calls for extremes. Now over to Taylor. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, it's your girl, Tay. Say what? As you guys know, it's the new year, 2013, which means new gossip. So, pop quiz. What does Kim Kardashian, Rihanna, and Kristen Stewart all have in common besides being fabulous celebrities? You give up? Well, they are all cuffed. Yep, guys, it's that time of the year again, cuffing season. For all you guys that don't know what cuffing season is, it's a season usually for the fall and winter months. So starting in October up to mid-February, you know, get that Valentine's Day in. Within those few months is when the cold weather prolonged indoor activity, causing singles to become lonely and desperate to be cuffed. They try to find a mate, a cuddle buddy, a boo thing, and become tied down to a serious relationship. Over here, we have a lovely couple. They don't even realize I'm over here. Isn't that? They're just darling, aren't they? <sighs> but little do they know, cuffing season's about to be over. So say goodbye to cuffing season and hello to the single and ready to mingle. But for the celebrities mentioned, I don't think they will be single for a long time. Not at all in their situations. Since Kim Kardashian, she wants to be pregnant by Kanye West now. Rihanna in that love triangle with Chris Brown and Karuchi. And Kristen Stewart shacked up with her co-star Robert Pattinson. I don't think it's any time at all, like I said. But that's all for the gossip for now. Now to Allison and Amanda. Hey guys, my name is Allison Clark. And I'm Amanda Miller. Today, I will be providing you with some quick tips on places to visit and things to do in Philadelphia while you pursue your degree at Temple University. Many college students pose the question, what's there to do in Philadelphia? But here's a better question, what isn't there to do in Philadelphia? Here are a few places you want to visit during your stay at Temple. First up is Penn's Landing. Penn's Landing is known as the waterfront along the Delaware River, just a short walk away from Old City. Penn's Landing hosts a ton of attractions all year long, including movie screenings under the stars and free concerts over the summer to ice skating on an Olympic-sized rink during the winter. Second, we have everyone's favorite hangout spot, Love Park. 
Love Park is a hotspot in Center City located near JFK Plaza, well known for the famous sculpture. Love Park is the perfect location for a date or even a scenic afternoon walk. Third, we have museums. Museums are almost everywhere in Philadelphia. A few you might want to visit are the Please Touch Museum, where you will encounter entertaining hands-on exhibits, the Philadelphia Museum of Art, and the Atwater Kent Museum of Philadelphia History. Next up, we have the Philadelphia Zoo on Girard Avenue. It's only a few minutes away from Temple Campus. Last but not least, we have everyone's favorite, food. There are tons of restaurants all around Philadelphia. Don't forget Restaurant Week takes place about twice a semester. You can dine in and enjoy a three-course lunch for $20 or a three-course dinner for $35 at some pretty good restaurants. Now to Amanda for some more off-campus fun. The start of the spring semester is right around the corner, and that means that your 2013 spring break is not far off. So it's time to start planning your vacation now. There are several great spots to choose from when planning your getaway. Las Vegas is always a popular choice. With numerous nightclubs, music and comedy acts, and events to choose from, thousands of spring breakers flock here every year. Some hotels, such as the MGM Grand and the Hard Rock, are known for the pool parties they throw for spring break, so look out for them as well. Act now to get a deal on accommodations on the Strip. If you don't want to spend the money on airfare, but still like the casino atmosphere, you could take a drive to nearby Atlantic City, New Jersey instead. South Beach is another great location to travel to on spring break. With miles of beautiful beaches and resorts to choose from, plus an abundance of nightclubs and the nearby Miami Beach, South Beach is a popular choice. For another Florida destination, check out Panama City. Set on the Gulf of Mexico, it has miles of beaches and is known for the huge parties that go on over spring break. In Mexico, try Cabo San Lucas or the always popular Cancun for spring break. Without a gigantic price tag, there are tons of activities to choose from during the day, like snorkeling and scuba diving, and a hot nightlife in both cities. Finally, if you have your heart set on the Caribbean, try Jamaica or the Bahamas. Enjoy the hot sun and cold drinks in Jamaica, and look for an ultra-cheap, all-inclusive package to save money. During spring break in the Bahamas, the vacation deals are incredible, with many hotels to choose from. You could also try one of the Bahamas' famous party cruises. There are plenty of places to choose from for an awesome spring break vacation. Try one of these spots and you're sure to have plenty to do during the day and endless partying at night. That's all for our show. Thanks for checking out what's new in 2013.